Boobs. Man boobs. Man cans. Maybe even bitch tits. Listen, no matter what derogatory term you may have heard targeted at you, hopefully after this video today, this is the last time you're ever going to hear them. What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleanX.com. So I've spent a good amount of time in clubhouses and locker rooms. I can tell you I've heard the insults flying around. As a matter of fact, pointed at me a few times. And we all know that, especially when it's something we're self-conscious about, it doesn't really feel that good. So if you've heard any of those things, hopefully, like I said, it's the last time you're ever going to hear it, because in this video, I'm going to try to solve your problem. And I realize that when it comes to an excessive amount of chest fat and a saggy chest, that a lot of guys don't even feel comfortable leaving the house, pandemic or not, to head out to the beach because of how self-conscious they feel about this problem. Well, the good news is I'm going to show you something you can do without ever having to leave the house. Four things that you can do at home to start getting rid of this problem today. As a matter of fact, number four is something you can start doing right now to start making a noticeable improvement. So with that being said, guys, let me start breaking them down one by one. All right, so step number one is what I want you to do as soon as you're done watching this video. Make sure it's after you're done watching the video. And that is I want you to walk over to a mirror, take a good look, and then get real. And part of doing that is knowing actually what problem it is that you're facing. Because not all saggy chest issues arise from the same cause. See, if your chest looks like this, with the majority of the fat centralized around the nipple, maybe it's even a little hard or a little sore when you touch it, that's not really a chest fat problem. That's something called gynecomastia. It can come from steroid abuse. It can come from just simply having the wrong genetics. But the fact is, the treatment is different. You're going to need maybe surgical or at least medical approaches to get to the bottom of that problem. But here's the good news. Only about two out of 10 people that have saggy chest issues are actually dealing with that as the problem. More of us are dealing with this. And it's simply just an abundance of fatty tissue in the breast. And that's something that men don't want to have. And it can happen at any level of body fat, as you can see. So if you're still with me and yours is a body fat issue, let's move to step two, because that's where we start to make a really big impact. All right, so now with body fat accumulation identified as the root cause of your problem, we now move on to step two. And the good news here is that we're not looking at medical or surgical intervention to fix what ails you. Instead, we're looking at what you can do and solely what you can do, because you have the power to make this change. But I have some bad news for you. Your diet sucks. Or at least it's not good enough. Because no matter how you're eating right now, let's face it, it's not good enough to get you where you want to be. And any body fat accumulation issue is always going to come down to the fact that you're not eating healthy enough. We have to make some changes. And those changes happen in trying to cut back some calories to create a calorie deficit that's going to help you to start burning that body fat away. Now again, you don't get a choice of where you lose this, and that's actually going to come and help us out in the long run here, as I'll explain in a second. So how much are we talking about here? Well, first, let me give you a little bit of uplifting news. If you were to ask me, Jeff, how difficult is it going to be for me through dietary changes to fix this problem, on a scale of 0 to 10, I'd say this is about a 3 or a 4. Now, if you said, Jeff, I want to get this vein that's running right above my junk that leads right up to my APAC, I'd say, well, okay, now you just asked me for about a 9 or a 10. So your goal is actually very achievable here. I recommend doing this. Look for about a 20% decrease in the amount of calories you're consuming right now. You don't have to get there all by consuming less calories. If you want to supplement with a little bit of cardio, you can do that. But the fact is, nutrition is going to be the fastest and the most effective way to get there. Now, the obvious thing is to do a, a first round sweep and say, what's the obvious shit I need to take out of my diet? Am I drinking too much? Am I eating fried foods too often? Am I eating out at restaurants too often where I know I'm not eating well? The fact is, you make the changes that you know you can probably make without much effort. Here's the other good news. Because of the way men store body fat, you actually don't have to be so damn good. Perfect is certainly not necessary when we're trying to decrease body fat on our chest, and here's why. In men, we tend to store body fat centrally. So again, we store it all over and we add it in all places at all times, but we sort of do so in a bit of an ascending way, right? We start here most stubbornly at the lower belly, and then we kind of work in through the abdomen and then to the love handles. And again, that kind of works its way up, right? You've seen guys who have maybe a four pack, they get a little fatter, then it becomes a two pack, they get fatter, and then that chest that was kind of already covered in some fat gets even worse and worse, right? It's the proportionate rate at which we add fat. You're adding it everywhere, but it gets worse and worse the more and more fat you add to your body and the higher the body fat levels go. Well, here's some good news. When you go in the reverse and you're trying to lose weight, you actually lose it as a last on, first off scenario. So most guys, when they start to make even some minor improvements in their nutrition, start to lose fat on the way down. So you start to see the chest look better. Then you start to see that two-pack. Then you start to see the four-pack. Again, you're losing it everywhere. 
but proportionally you start to lose it a little bit faster in the places that you put it on the most recently. And that again points to chest fat. So you don't have to be so strict in what you're doing. So if you make that reduction and you start doing what I'm telling you here guys, get honest with yourself, I promise you, the fat will stop to drop off. But then again, what happens then? What do you have underneath it? And that brings us to step number three, and this is something you can actually do at the same time you're working on improving your nutrition. Because if you get step two right, at some point we're gonna know what's going on underneath there. Because if it doesn't look good and you have no actual chest muscle development, then you're still gonna have a problem because you're gonna look like this. And that's not what you're looking for. So you wanna do is, you get that body fat down, but now we have to make sure that we develop the muscle that's underneath. And there's a specific way that we wanna attack this if you're gonna do it more scientifically. What do we do? Well, we have to choose the right exercises. Now ideally, guys, I would encourage you to get on an overall training plan. Because I know if you're adopting this as a lifestyle, your long-term outlook is gonna be better than someone that's just sort of intermittently hitting the gym. And when that plan consists of not just chest exercises, but let's say big compound lifts like deadlifts, squats, rows, and the bench press, well you have a better ability to develop more muscle mass overall that's going to benefit you metabolically in terms of the number of calories that you burn at rest. So staving off fat accumulation is going to be a lot easier. However, we do have some exercises that if you're not going to do anything but just a few things, then let's start working on some of these chest exercises that incorporates a little bit more targeted effort towards the lower abdominal head fibers of the pec major. And we know we can do that by simply following the fibers. I say it all the time. You want to take your arm from a position up high and move it down low because we know the fibers of the abdominal head run in this direction. Well, we have some options. The first thing is to actually take a high to low crossover with a simple band anchored to a pull-up bar in your doorway at home. And what this does is it gives us a chance to get a good complete chest contraction because we want to get our arm not just down, but down and across midline. We could take push-up variations and modify them as well. And the incline push-up is preferable because it gives us a chance to again take that arm from a high to low position. You can see as I look at it from the side. Now what we do here is add an additional plus to the top of this. This gives you a chance to work the serratus activation into this, which is a muscle that kind of supports the chest activity from below. The third thing we can do here is take that same exercise and just simply add a twist. And all this is doing is again incorporating some more of that adduction to the exercise that we didn't have from the straight standard incline push-up plus. And again, all we have to do here is just simply twist our body this time, which gives us the same relative adduction of the arm across the chest. The next two exercises, well the first one is just a classic. We know that the basic dip is one of the best ways to target the lower fibers of the pec major. The problem is sometimes it's a little bit too difficult for some people because they have to command their own body weight here in space, and if you're at that sort of heavier weight and higher body fat percentage, you might find this a little bit challenging. So you simply incorporate a band if needed to unweight some of your body weight and start to crank out these reps. And of course, you can always do these at home in the corner of a kitchen counter, and if you need be, put one foot down to simply unweight some of your body weight. And then finally, we have another option we could do here with the band anchored to the pull-up bar in your doorway, and it's simply called the reverse lateral. Instead of taking your arm out to the side and raising it like you would in a lateral raise for your shoulders, you now take your arm from the top and pull it down into your side. That's part of the exercise. At this point now, we push down as hard as we can, incorporating a little bit more of that plus. Any of these exercises are great options, guys, but again, if I had a choice, I'd push you in the direction of making sure you start with a foundation of a good program and then sprinkle these in accordingly. And that brings us to step number four, and this is the one that I said might surprise you because this is something you can change right now. Like literally watching this video, you can make this change. You ready? Stop slumping over. If your posture sucks, I don't care what level of development your chest has right now, it's going to look worse. The reason for this is the chest is designed with an attachment in the shoulder to be a broad muscle that stands at attention. And as soon as you allow that shoulder to be brought in, either chronically because you have really tight muscles in the front of your body, not just the chest, but the lats can be contributing as well, that makes your shoulders round forward and creates a smaller looking, saggier looking chest well, you need to do something about it. It could be as simple as being aware of the problem. Simply standing up and rolling those shoulders back allows that chest to look more of what it's intended to look like. Now, I have an entire video dedicated to how to fix a chronically rounded shoulder posture. I'm gonna link that for you at the end of this video, but the awareness right here, right now, of realizing that this is contributing to your problem is important, and it's one that I don't want you to miss when it comes to the overall attack plan for fixing your problem once and for all. 
And there you have it guys, a step-by-step -step game plan for getting rid of not only that ugly chest fat, but more importantly, those derogatory terms aimed at you in the process. Guys, I never want you to have to look in the mirror again and not like what you see. Especially as I mentioned here before, it's not as difficult as you may have thought it was if you do the right things. If you're looking to take it to another level guys and you want a step-by-step -step plan including a meal plan, we include them with all of our programs over at athletenext.com. In the meantime, if you found the video helpful, make sure you leave your comments and thumbs up below. And also guys, if you haven't done so, make sure you click subscribe, turn your notifications so you never miss a new video when we put one out. All right guys, see you soon.